Hey everybody, thanks for being here today. We're gonna to continue on with the Roland drum kit. I felt it needed more from the last video. They've upgraded as well. There's version 2.0 of the software, which actually was a fairly significant upgrade. The guys who set this up and made this, they did a great job. It works really well, but they don't play drums. It's a huge technical curve that you're about to embark on. This is what this video is about. The seven things that I think are the most important things to jump into right away so you can just set yourself up with a rocking kit and play. I think the first thing you do is assign yourself a kit. Take 100 or 99 and use that to experiment with and learn the software. That way you're not making any changes to the pre-programmed kits because you may want to start with number one, pre-programmed. Don't make a change to that. Any change you make, it's written. I've got my kit set up under number 90 and I've named it my kit number one. So that way I know what it is and I can always go to that when I'm playing. Setting up your hi-hat settings. You can tell by the look on my face and from the last video, the hi-hat is not one of my friends. It may have gotten worse with version two because now there's two places to set up your hi-hat. This is without playing it or choosing which symbol to play, which type of hi-hat you want. This is just to set it up as a piece of equipment in the software. So you go to setup and you go into hi-hat settings and this is where you set the calibration of how it sits when you're closed and open. So there's several types that you can put in here and the one I have is a VH10. The hi-hat sense, this is where it becomes weird, is how sensitive the open and close is to your touch. And I've got it set at plus five, so it's a bit more sensitive than zero. It does go down to minus 10, up to plus 10. It's the sound thing. You're gonna play with it and figure out what you like. Um, and it's how your foot reacts with the pedal. That sort of tensioning within the sound as it comes together. The other hi-hat setting is located in other. If you go down to volume, click on the button, then you have pedal hi-hat volume and the hi-hat open and close balance. This is an important feature in my opinion, should be top of the list, and you'd think it would be with the hi-hat settings, but the guy who wrote this doesn't play drums. You need to get an SD card. They don't sell that at the drum store. So that tells you right away, okay, we're stepping away from music for a second here. And this will be good for you to help when you're doing recordings back and forth with any kind of music that you do separately, you can bring it in here. You can record yourself playing to music. You can record yourself playing by yourself. You can record yourself just to have recording yourself. It's not just another drum set. It is a lot of drum sets. It's a lot of technology. You can set this up any way you want to. The picture was taken by the same guy who did the user interface. He just set it up the way he thinks it's supposed to be set up. What you can do with this is unlimited. With the symbols, you can make two symbols, the one crash, one ride, and use the other symbol. You have two positions that you can get sounds out of, so you can have two more percussion in that. Make one into a splash and the other into a china. In the settings itself, looking at the kit, you have the bass trouble of how the kit sounds overall, but you can also create ambience. And this is where we move on to the next step. You're not doing drums anymore. It's all about setting levels now. If you've ever tuned a set of acoustic drums, you understand how painful that can be and how tedious a process. I'm gonna try and do a bunch of settings here and just give you some scope with some of the terminology which was completely, and still is, unfamiliar to me. The guy who wrote this at Roland, I have a drummer sitting beside you. So one of the cool things about this is when you get into levels, because you can set the pan of left or right where it is in the room. On this crash, it's six. On the right crash, it's right 10. On the ride, it's right six, because you want a bit more centered. The drum's the same. Center, center, left, right, right. So that's the effect it's putting into the stereo. Pretty fucking cool. You can assign the drum that you want the drum to be. So on a snare, if you want a maple or a birch or a metal, you can have that. The snare drum also has a very unique kind of, I'll call it an omnidirectional setup. So you can put the snare anywhere you want to between your legs. So it's assignment, we'll hit assign, we're on snare. So you can watch it change over to maple, Seal, brass, aluminum, heat shell, maple pillow, 
brush. And then we get an acrostic. I don't know what the acrostic is. The snare setting is a little bit different because you can also set in the strainer, whether it's loose or all the way to tight. See the differences between the snare and the drums that are available to you. In this case, we've got the maple and each drum, the birch, and the beach, and the shell, and the brush. And the buzz here is where you can set off snare buzz. Sticking with programming, and now we get into the percussion. Gong. Reflective bell. Reverse and phase. I bought this drum kit to play drums. Ah! It's another level. Invest in a good set of headphones. It's worth it. Spend a few hundred dollars, get a really good set. Roland makes a set for the V drums. If you're playing live, you really need to get an amplifier. I've got the PM100 from Roland. It's designed for the V drums. It's really designed, I guess, an amp for yourself, or if you're playing in a small pub, it would probably be fine. But when you're playing live, you need to have a monitor coming back with you because the PA system is going to be out there. So you have no idea what you sound like. Unless you're playing through headphones, which you can do. Thank you for being here today. It's been fun. I, I really like the kit. I'm not disappointed. Don't get me wrong. I think it is a good investment if you're willing to commit. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Would I have bought the same kit? Maybe not. I might have bought one of the lesser expensive ones because I really just wanted something to play. But, but, <laughs> having gotten into it, I realized just what's in my hands. The sound that comes out of these drums, and I would think it's, for the most part, all of them, is stunning. And it's worth, I think, making that investment. And if you're a professional acoustic drum player, touring and that sort of thing, it may be a good idea to consider getting one of these for the bus or getting one for your hotel room. Bring your, let your roadies bring it up. It is really a 20 minute setup as you've seen in my previous videos. And put on headphones, you can practice all day long. But thanks again for being here. Please like, subscribe. My channel's growing really well. It's all because of you. Thank you very much. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.